I just started digging me a hole. Just slowly digging a hole for myself. And by 14, I'd been kicked out of school and stuff had got really hard at home and that's when my depression really started kicking in because I was losing friends and stealing mum's stuff and just just taking off, just coming home to sleep basically and spend all hours out doing dumbass shit, getting in trouble with my friends, with friends. Um, yeah, stealing all this stuff, trying to like make life difficult for her because I thought my life was so difficult. I thought my I had the worst amount of shit on my plate ever. So I was gonna make a conscious effort to make everyone else's life harder as well. Which added to my depression. By the time I had went to live with my grandfather, um, I'd had three attempts I think if it wasn't for my granddad constantly making me do stuff around the house, like mowing the lawns and go gardening and do all that boring shit that teenagers hate, like if it wasn't for that, I probably would have just gone for another attempt. Having a routine, having stuff to do is much more helpful. Like even if it's shit that you don't like doing, it's actually way more helpful than sitting there and overthinking and just like sinking back into your depressive episodes like that's not the tahi then I moved to Wellington from there and we moved down here and I was really excited because this was this was going to be a fresh start this was going to be a clean slate where no one knew me no one knew about my episodes there was no one going oh, that girl used to be such a good girl, like she had so much potential and now look at her. I hated the thought of people saying that about me. It was a good way to like leave everyone who, all the influences that made me so depressed, it was a good way to leave those behind and like just leave them there. The first year I was down here, my cousin passed away and um, that, that was a big hit for me. That was a huge hit. Because he'd committed suicide and... And... Like, we went to the tangi and we got it, we did the do. And we were grieving for ages and then... Not long after that, another one of my mates died. And... Like, it just started a whole chain effect. Like, I could see, I could just see the people I loved up there just dropping like flies of their own, like that was their choice. Heaps of the girls that I went to school with, like you just see RIP posts all the time. I think there was a good like a solid two month block where that's just all you've seen on Facebook, on my Facebook, was people just dying. Just, there was a whole and it was just scary and seeing it all the time and reading it all the time it just I don't know it ramped up my depression and maybe life isn't that worth worth living like you know you see all your friends drop and you're like they didn't they didn't find anything worth sticking around for like, and I'm sitting here reading all of it, crying my ass over it. Why am I sticking around then? Like, yeah. It just got, it got to the point where I had to, like, I had to make the decision to take myself off Facebook. Because otherwise it was just trigger after trigger after trigger. Like constantly. I think about it now and the thought of attempting again and success it like makes me sick to think of what that'd do to my mum and my brother. Like it makes me sick to my stomach just because I know how that feels to lose someone you love. Like 
I've buried people like that. And it's got to be the most hurtful shit to do. Because you haven't even got anyone to blame. And it's just like, so I really, thinking about it now makes me sick to my stomach. Because I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't do that to my brother. After we got out of Kinepuru Hospital, we managed to get ourselves an education. And instead of being behind, now we're in front. And it really rocks when you get to that, that point. Because that's what makes it, that's when it is better. My doctors and everyone and all the people that I worked with would tell me, like breathing exercises and distraction methods and it was finding what worked for you and breathing methods were useless for me at one, two in the morning and so were distraction methods because my best distraction method was to turn on the speaker and turn it up as loud as I possibly can and drowned out all the ringing and humming in my head. But I think, like as corny as it does sound, and as much of a lie as it is, it does semi sort of get better. When you're ready to, when you're ready for it to get better, thinking about one thing at a time, like one single thing at a time helps like you chuck every other thought out of your head and you pick the priority and you just spend a good five minutes just thinking about that thought unless it's like a bad one well even if it is a bad one because then you can Spend time and think of ways to get rid of that thought. Hugging a pillow always worked. And turning the lights on. Turning the lights on was a big one. Because that meant actually you're not in a dark space.